There we go. Is this on? I think we're on. Hello, hello. Am I on the internet? Yeah, I'm on the internet. All right, welcome everyone. It is uh, it is Sunday. It's streaming day. It was supposed to be streaming day last Sunday, and it just didn't happen. Uh, school, work, all of the above. Sorry. But we're back. I'm back. And uh, I have a cover here from, uh, what is this? This is uh, Deathstalker number two, drawn by the lovely and talented Nate Gooden. And, uh, and I'm going to color this on the stream today. If you have questions, feel free to ask in the chat box where you type things at. You guys know where that is. And I'll answer your questions and talk about coloring and all that kind of stuff. I, I, I do these intros like you're watching for the first time to the same four people. And I always say, yeah, we know. We know. We know what you're doing. Anyway, I guess people start from the beginning sometimes. So I'll explain the layers here. Uh, the inks are on a transparent layer. Um, that I uh, created, uh, the, uh, I didn't create, Nate drew the contents of the layer, and uh, I just clicked this button, and uh, this button says uh, convert brightness to opacity. It's the same thing as edit convert brightness to opacity. And in one click, it puts it on a transparent layer, which is very handy. And uh, that is better than just using multiply mode, in my opinion, because we can clip things um, to the layer, you know, we can color on the layer very easily that way too, which you can't really do in multiply mode, not the same way. So, hey, Jason, how's it going? Welcome. It feels like it's been an age. Oh, what am I? Oh, excuse me. I've been drinking. Uh, this is uh, this is good old um, filtered through my fridge tap water. <laughs> excuse me. But yeah, yeah, it's too early for anything else, I think. Uh, and then uh, this layer doesn't really have anything on it. It's just dark gray. Uh, and this layer is uh, the flats, which is, that's what they look like. The colors are sort of irrelevant, but uh, that's, that's its own piece of art for another day. Uh, and then uh, these three layers uh, are just selections. Uh, dudes is just this. And then boar pig man is that. And then that's the BG, the background, um, which is also all one color in the flats, and I probably don't need it, but it's in there. And I put those there because uh, you can just, what button is that? Control. Or uh, if you're on a Mac, uh, it's something else. Um, but if you control click that little image, it will select the contents of that layer. And that's handy when we get to the point where we're like, oh, that needs to be a little darker and further away, you know, and all that. And anyway, so we have lots of ways to make selections. And I was thinking about this. I just got out of the shower. My, my hair is still wet. And so you're going to see the beard just slowly sort of grow into a big curly mess over the, the course of the stream. Um, but I was thinking about this in the shower, about what we want to do here. And, um, uh, because I haven't, I just got this in, uh, not too long ago. I haven't really had a whole lot of time to look at it. Um, but I like the little touch of, of the guy, uh, holding on to the swords, you know, they look like they're posing like in a studio and he has somehow snuck in the back. That's how I'm reading this. I might be wrong. I'm just kidding, Nate. This is very cool. I'm just messing around. But it does kind of look like that. So I was wondering, what if we had like... What if there was like a really bright light kind of like on these dudes? Like very studio-ish sort of lighting coming down this way. And then, you know, you get a little uh, reflecting onto this guy... 
and he kind of feels like he snuck in through the back somehow. That's what I'm. That's what I think we're gonna do here. Um. This also feels like a very kind of. Uh, uh, what do you call it? I think you want to do this sort of uh, on the simple side, rendering wise. I, like, there's a lot of detail in the lines, which right now you guys can't see because I've got this huge dark <laughs> cover over everything. Sorry, let me blind you and show you the cover. Um, but yeah, I kind of like there, there's a lot of detail in the inks, and and so. Um, I want to make sure that that shows up. So maybe we try something like a little bit more like cell shaded and simpler, and then I'll end up over rendering a little bit more than that anyway. But that's what I'm thinking to start. So does that work for y'all? Great. I've I've rearranged some things on my screen, and I just realized I am. My eyes are doing this now, so I need to readjust. There we go. Now I can see the chat, and am I still online? <laughs> and, you know, do I have something stuck in my nose? I got everything right across there. Hey, Chris, how's it going? Welcome, welcome. But yeah, this is, if I was working, I don't even know if I want to work this way on this one. Um... Let's go, I'm just gonna pick like a middle gray color to start with. And that kind of gives me uh, a good baseline, you know, peg in the dirt to measure everything else off of. That made sense. Um, But if I want this to look, so if I'm wanting like, hmm. Tell you what, I'm just gonna start doing some flats changing some base colors and we're gonna let this one just just flow out I'm not gonna overthink it too much because I know what I want to do and if I try to explain it I'll convince myself it's the wrong way to do it so yeah this will be this will be simpler Yeah, because I, I like how uh, Nate has a very, um, his lines often end up in angles. A lot of things are very angular. And so um, I kind of want to try to follow that um, with the coloring, rendering, and all that. Uh, and maybe try a little simpler than I usually do. Which has been very, I've been in a painty mood lately. A lot of painty stuff. Uh, hello, actual Dracula. How are you? <laughs> good morning. Uh, good to see you again. Yeah, at least this guy doesn't have a ton of colors to worry about. <laughs> I really do feel sometimes, I've never done one of those big, uh, like, multicolor costume group books. I've never done that. And I think about those colorists a lot. <laughs> um... Because I, I look at them in the books that they're doing, and I'm just like, this is a lot of colors. Good morning, your videos helped me, and many of my classmates at the Coover School learned to color. Thank you so much. Uh, I think... Um, I need to start a fund of, of, of all the <laughs> that's going to come out wrong, but of all the people from various uh, programs 
that have told me similar things. Just two percent off the top of all your invoices. I, I should be good. I mean, it was in the fine print in the description. I don't. You must have missed that. But yeah, you're locked into that for life now. But no, thank you very much. I, I, I do appreciate that. Yeah, you guys have, I, I got a lot of, lot of great comments on, um, the last video I posted, so I, I, I read them all, I replied, I think, to almost all of them, or at least hearted them or something, but yeah, th thank y'all very much. I appreciate it, I do appreciate it. So this is the, um, the least fun part of being a colorist, if you were wondering, or at least to me. which is just uh, choosing the colors part. <laughs> that doesn't come out right either. No, the uh, just the base colors, and, and, and they're important. They're really important, and they need to be what they are and all that. they got to be there. But the actual act of doing them is the part that um, is less fun. I'm also using the highly uh, scientific method uh, slide the bars around until I see the color that I want. That's, uh, that's how that works. Like, nope, not that one, not that one, mm, that one. But yeah, how are y'all doing? How you been? Sorry I've missed the last couple weeks. The uh, full-time work, full-time school. I can't say I recommend it. But you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. <laughs> but it feels like it's been forever since I've been on stream. All right. No, you're right, Dracula. What I like is when the little fiddly part is done and they're all in there, and then I can start playing with the big picture, like the piece of art. Like, that's the fun part. Like, I mean, sure, there's an art to this part. I'm not saying that there's not, but um, it, it's also in the hierarchy of, like, the creative fun part. It's just, <laughs> it's it's on the lower end. Flatting would be under the basement, four floors below, just for the scale, to, you know. So everybody's following the scale of fun. <laughs> and also, favorite thing, what do you do back here? What do we do back here? We have so many options. Everything works right now because it's just, you know, it's it's a big empty space. Um, but I'm think I still I'm thinking go darkish on the background and have this guy like come lurking out of it or something maybe appreciate you being here thank you unit 15 thank you thank you
I'm in the thinking portion. So I've got a got my brain hurts here. Let's see. So he's got a great big like looming silhouette. Right? And that like needs to be captured. Which it doesn't take much, but you do need to like I think the silhouette's important. Uh, what I what I see I, I do uh, every month you guys know I, I do a uh, I do feedback for my members and patreon people and all that stuff and so I see a lot of, of, of pages from uh, colorists of all levels you know and um, often the big it's it's pretty core but the big shapes the big silhouettes you know the, what the artist intended to read as a shape. <laughs> Don't forget about that. Uh, you know, because you can put two colors or two values even that are real close together uh, in a really important, you know, line or shape breakdown between two shapes, and the colors kind of just completely weaken it and wash it out, you know? So, um, and on this, like, you know, just from, uh, um, from like a total piece standpoint, it's like these guys are... Uh, relatively small. I mean, they're big on the cover, and they're the stars of the cover, but relative to this bad guy, uh, they're definitely sort of looming over them, you know? And so I want to make sure that it feels like that. You know, if, if I just um, did everything, like whatever local color it was, it would look cool, because art looks cool. But, you know, anything I can do to push that a, a little bit further... Uh, around, I'm gonna try to anyway. Um, and I don't think I want to get crazy bright around this thing. Yeah, that's a good place to start, and then. And then the dudes will control click the dudes layer. And uh, if I take like, uh, let me merge all of this down. I don't really, there we go. Um, so what if we took that green shadow color on a normal layer above it? And so I get asked a lot, how do you get your colors to blend in with your shadows? So like here's a, Here's a cool way. So this is just a normal layer, okay? It's nothing fancy. It's completely covering. It's opaque. You can just lower the opacity. And what it'll do is it'll sort of blend the uh, shadow color with what's underneath. Now, it's not doing any fancy hard light, soft light, or blending modes or anything. This is just a normal mode. Um, but just lowering the opacity will give you uh, a set of base colors that are they feel like they're in your shadows, right? Uh, and there's a lot of ways to do that. You can do that with like multiply, but you'd probably have to use a different color. Um, if you do, if we tried that, if I put this in multiply mode and just chose the same green, like that green is multiplying and doing a shadow thing because you're in multiply mode. Um, hard light... Uh, also, like different feel, but it's not, it doesn't feel quite the same. Um, and I don't feel like the local color is coming through very much at all. So, uh, but anyway, uh, that's a really simple uh, method of kind of bringing them in uh, to the background. And again, making them feel like they're part of that, uh, that shadow color or whatever. Um, now, I can get on top of this layer and do all of my other rendering. Um, using that as a base, um, and that's probably what I'll do on this one. Uh, what's up? Happy related Thanksgiving. Thank you, Rufus. Um, yes, to you too. Um, has this much member stream been scheduled? Uh, yes, it's next week, next Sunday, a week from today. I think I said that, but if I didn't... I will remind everyone in the Discord member stream. Hold on, because I don't think I would put it in the Discord. 
next member stream is what day is that December 17th this is what you came for I know sorry yeah but no good looking out I don't think I'd post it in the discord yet I think I sent it out on somewhere patreon or I lost y'all where did you go uh, there that is there that is But yeah, no, it's next week. But anyway, um, but yeah, I think that'll be a nice base for these guys, like in the non, uh, in the shadow areas or whatever. And then for this lovely creature, is that all skin? I think it is. Uh, I'm going to start uh, fiddling around a little with the colors under here and changing some of these values up. But I do want to keep this mostly on the dark side because I am going to um, come back and do some lighting uh, over the top of this. I think that's a good place to start. Yeah, the only other yeah, the only other Sundays are yeah, holidays. I do have tickets to see um uh the Pelicans and Lakers on New Year's Eve. That should be interesting. I mean they'll probably get annihilated, but it'll be fun to watch. And uh, I think I'm going to go with some cool highlights on this and see what that looks like, actually. I'm going to make a couple of quick selections here. And do, 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 do. I want to see what I'm doing. So first, I want to brighten this. And I want to shift it cool. That'd be really cool. But I don't want it to be purple. So I'm taking some red out. And now, let's see. What does that look like? I think I like that for, hmm, do I like this? I think I do like this. I'm debating. Give me a second. If we start with that, and then we'll have some really, really convenient, like, you know, rim light or something across there. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's try this. I've never tried shifting colors on an adjustment layer before. Yeah, this is, I mean, this is like, again, like there's a lot of ways to do this, but um, I think it's, it, I don't know, it's the equivalent of like probably screen mode or, or maybe, maybe it's something like screen mode on a certain color blue. It's probably the same thing. Um, but for some reason, this feels easier to me. Or faster. Like. Yeah, I think I like the idea of uh, a little sail shading. I can't talk. Sail shading. Sail shading on this one today. I haven't done that very much lately. But I think it just fits with his 
art style to me really well. And there's not really like a super hard, the light sort of coming from the front on him a little bit on tops of the fingers and stuff. So like we'll have a little bit of underlighting probably too. But this is really just more for the subtle parts. Or the softer lighting, I guess I should say, what I'm trying to say. And I'm hitting uh, the letter Q to look at the quick mask because to me it's more clear what's happening than the marching ants that we're seeing now. of this we're getting down kind of under the snout and all that so there's really not going to be a ton of detail down there And we'll get to like a watercolory brush. I'm just gonna dab this in here just like that. Excuse me, how do you keep the colors and values consistent? I, I, I literally open up one page next to the other page and, you know, sometimes I pick the same colors if it's the same scene, the same stuff going on. Other times it's more about, you know, the feel of the scene than it is any particular, you know, um, you know the the color consistency is like it's important to an extent but like it's not uh it just needs to feel consistent it's not going to necessarily be the uh, the same colors very often it's not But yeah, a lot of times I just have them both open if I really need the same colors. <laughs> I 
Uh, I don't even know. I don't know yet. I haven't seen him in the book yet. So that happens a lot. <laughs> like, I mean, I'll, I'll get the pages soon and uh, go through the script and all that, but I don't think uh, I don't think I've seen him on interiors just yet. That's another reason why I work on a lot of layers <laughs> is because I want to make sure that they come in and go, oh, the pig is pink. It's like, oh, okay. Like, you know, it makes it pretty easy to go back and adjust things, you know. But yeah, and if you've ever seen a cover for me that was like really, not all of them, but that was just really um, no local color at all, like some really strong just red and white color scheme, it's because I didn't have any idea what color anybody was. <laughs> and they're like, oh, well, do you have any reference yet? Oh, well, they don't show up until, you know, the end of the book. They're They're not there yet. Like, you know, I'm like, oh, gotcha. I'm letting you guys in on all the secrets you're not supposed to know here. I'm getting lost in my rendering. What am I doing? There we go. And then you turn it in, they're like, oh man, how did you, that's so cool. It's such a strong coloring decision, man. Like, that's amazing that you thought of that. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not claiming all of them are like that. <laughs> Just some of them. <clears throat> I'm also putting a lot more detail in the hands than, like, you know, chess and other places on this guy because it's just not as critical from a uh, story standpoint. that up somehow. <laughs> I'm getting there. How's it going? Sorry, I forgot to talk. Um, 
Yeah, this stage is really, I, I'm just trying to do this sort of general soft lighting on everything, and then uh, we'll come back through and probably shift some of the colors around and do some other stuff over the top. But we're not quite there yet. What if, hold on, what if we put a mask on that layer and erased? Uh, it won't really work on that, but I bet it will on this, like that. So you're basically lighting it with the rendering. Uh, with what was underneath, technically, I guess. Let's try that. Is this zoomed up too much? Probably. I'm really trying to get that sort of snarled up, you know, corner of his mouth he's doing there. Oops. And so, and again, so remember I put this 50% uh, shadow over the top, just normal mode. And so now with a mask on it, if I switch to a transparent layer, I can basically reveal the skin underneath. And that looks cool. And all the colors will tie together really well because uh, the shadows will basically tied them all together. And it might not be great on everything, like his hair is so close to how dark it is anyway, so like I can't really, it's not revealing a, a bright enough highlight. So you know, you can't just use it for everything, but it will, uh, it will look cool on uh, the rest of it though. And I'm getting like another level of highlights out of that just by going a little bit more pressure, a little bit harder on it there. Um, and you could also mix it up with some of that lighting from the other guy if you wanted to. That's the same blue that was up there. It just, it's an option. We don't have to do that right now, but it does look cool. And this also, like, really, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of trying to 
does this fit with that or does this color belong or whatever it's like if you do that in the early early stages then you've you've kind of figured that part out already and 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 this is definitely letting you know the the blending modes do a lot of the work but that means it can look really flat and boring if you're not careful about still managing that like um some of these sort of tricky things that are like this can can easily become you know crutches if you don't really know what you're doing and I'm just saying that as a warning for anybody that's watching there's like oh I'm going to do it this on every single thing exactly the same you know it's like just be careful about make sure you understand what you're doing <laughs> And I wasn't going to do a bunch of painty stuff on this. So I think I'm just going to let's make some shapes instead. Sometimes it's, I don't know why, I think because I did so much cut and grat early on, sometimes I think I get better shapes. Well, I know I get better shapes sometimes out of doing this method as opposed to just painting it in. So I'll do this sometimes like just as a base to start and then like paint over it basically. And I still don't want it to be um, just completely flat color either. Um, let's see, why is that not brushing? There we go. Um, like I don't want the shapes I'm making now even to just be flat shapes. Like they should, there should be a little bit of a gradient in it because his, like your shoulder is completely, your arm is cylindrical. And so there really shouldn't be any point where it's like flat if you're going for like any kind of realism in the shape of it at least. And I got to say, taking uh, massage classes is definitely helping my anatomy. <laughs> There, there, there is more overlap in being an artist and being a massage therapist than I originally thought. I'm like, you guys don't know what pectorals are? You guys don't know what quads are? Like, <laughs> it turns out like studying anatomy for comic books comes in handy in massage therapy school. Shocking. Did not anticipate that. And 
for like the hair and the other parts, I really just want to get some highlights in here that are much brighter. And so uh, I'm just going to get on a just a hard light layer. And just paint those in. And again, this is like there's it's pressure sensitive. In some places, I'm going a little bit heavier. And same thing on like this stuff. You can sort of see it's meant to be a little bit of a like a shinier texture in the, the way the ink lines are. Didn't do anything to his eyes and teeth earlier, so I'm gonna take a little bit of that, a little bit of that, and again, I'm just erasing effectively what was already there. On that uh, shadow there, anyway. Got those earlier. And let's go ahead and bring this guy up to the same level of detail anyway. Uh, anything that's round like this, I do tend to like to start with a softer, uh, soft brush through the middle to get it kind of a nice gradient all the way around. And then, and then come in with the, uh, um, lasso to fill out the rest of it. And I'm going to push this a little bit brighter. And on the hair, I'm, I'm looking at these big areas that are in the front first. So I'm kind of looking at that. It's being one big shape, and then this one kind of comes down. And if you work through the hair in kind of layers like this, it sort of uh, looks a little bit more realistic because, you know, hair tends to do all sorts of things like over itself and whatnot. So then I can come back under there maybe and get some of this with some of that color.
Oh yeah, the name of the book is Death Stalker. This is the cover for the second issue, drawn by Nate Gooden. It's all at the bottom of the screen there. Uh, the previous commission piece you're working on, uh, Money Shot. Yeah, I did 15 issues of Money Shot. Uh, to me, it's it's my favorite book. <laughs> it's my favorite book I've done anyway. But it uh, it is it is not G rated though. Yeah, you're right. Not for everybody. Yeah, earlier I was talking about how just choosing the base colors is, is like the most boring part of the pro process. This is the most fun to me. <laughs> when you get a really nice, complex shape, and, um, and, then it, and then you get to do that, and it looks pretty. I don't know about the dates just yet. Uh, I, it's not. It, I I probably should, <laughs> but no, no, I don't. I don't have the dates on on me right now. For something really fuzzy like this, and you want it to feel that way, not really doing a whole lot of lasso-y stuff on this, just keeping it loose. And that is probably not supposed to be that color. Let's do that. Lovely. All right. Next, what do I want to do next? I want to do a quick, uh, I'm going to do this on a layer on top. No, can I use that? Hold on. Let's see. Does that? Hold on. I'm trying stuff again. Maybe so. Let's just use that. This is the same color that I used on the hippo earlier. I'm just going to bring it down. Into this area. And that should help kind of tie the... Uh, 
This should help tie the background to the foreground again. Or not again, but a little bit uh, better. Bright enough? I don't know. I don't think I like the look of that. So it's the same color uh, on both of these, the blue over here and like this teal over here. Like it's mixed in with what's underneath, uh, and that's what's causing it to look like two different colors, if that wasn't clear. I'm just blending this a little bit. It's a little too shapey for my taste on this.
nice sub scattering uh, subsurface scattering uh, it's just uh, I, I wasn't thinking about that but yeah I guess so more of um, just facial redness but yeah that too <laughs> All right, so I was just seeing what other colored shadows look like on these guys. It's a pretty different vibe. Well, it's a literally 180 degrees around the <laughs> around the color wheel. There's more contrast, but they don't feel like there is much of a a part of the rest of it to me. All right, so let's dress up the pig guy a little bit here. Oh, it's because of that cyan. Yeah, cyan and red just like basically cancel each other out. <laughs> So if you want red to show up, make sure it's not trying to blend with uh, cyan underneath. Because that's what was happening. Like, that's that's hard light on top of that bluish layer. And, uh, yeah, well, I brightened it there a little bit. Well, now it's not doing it. Well, it is, it is changing a little bit. Or maybe I'm insane. What was I on the wrong layer? I don't know what I did. Anyway... Uh, yeah, I noticed it um, uh, working on something the other day, and like red and and and, and they uh, they get really really dark against cool blues. What color? I'm just gonna put a color down, and then I'm gonna see. Like you don't want these things to be too unique, right? <laughs> yeah, I kind of like deep purple. I'm thinking again. CMYK compliments. Yeah, those. Yeah, the light just gets... Uh, like, if you ever have a... Like, you know that like pool color blue? That sort of... Like, uh, on, on ours, it's got... Like, the light has a little multicolor mode. And when it gets to red at night, it just turns everything black. It's like it goes out. It's very weird. It took me a minute to figure out what was going on. Like, I thought it was not working <laughs> like I thought it was cutting off it turns out the red and that like turquoise tealish blue that they use on like the bottom of a lot of swimming pools is an exact like opposite or whatever it just goes to nothing okay here's what I'm debating right now I'm wondering 
I don't think this needs this, but I'm thinking about it. Uh, what if we did... When you got the shadows, though, on this side of his hand, we can kind of play around that. I just don't know if this needs to happen or not. And then probably like that or something. Like that sort of. I don't know. Like it, it would give him a little bit, or her, or it would give them a little bit more. Um, you know, volume or whatever. Um, not volume, like depth. I guess is what I'm trying to say. But it's also like, I don't know, it might be it might be too much. I think it would work well either way. Mm, let's let's try it. Oh, wait, I can use, can I use, what layer was that? Was that that? Nope. That layer? Let's use that selection, if I was smart. Yeah. But not that, not that. I don't know if this is going to do what I want it to do or not. We're going to try. <laughs> and I'll have to clean that up a little bit. But do I? I don't think I like it. I think <laughs> this doesn't sound right. The less we see of this pig, the better. No, but I think it, uh, I don't think it needs it. I am trying to decide if it needs to be brighter back here. Because this is a cover. It needs to stand out on the shelf. So I just want to see what does that do. And does that screw it up? <laughs> I would need to brighten feel like I would need to brighten a little bit more on if we went that route. I would want, let's see, I never want anything to be like too unique, so I'm wondering if we bring a little bit of that down this way.
I think this is actually helping to do what I want it to do, is to get this snout out a little bit more. <laughs> That's ultimately what this is about, I think. Yeah, I like that a lot better. And I'm just going uh, to muddy this up a little and cover my tracks a little bit where it's a little too, oh, there's the shape of the brush sort of thing. Which is fine if you want that. But it's also fine if you don't. At this close, you really can't. I don't think you can tell. All right, I'm going to take a look at this in Photoshop because I've been looking at this in the clip with the CMYK preview and I mostly trust it these days. <laughs> mostly. Give me a second. I'm opening up Photoshop. What is this version of Photoshop that is opening? I don't know what version this is. It's newer than I think I usually use. But um, let's see. So fit on screen, control. There's the, let me see what it's doing here my color settings in here yes it's been five weeks since this pre-release build. oh pre-release build well no wonder it looks different I don't know how I got that on here actually so I've definitely not uh, done that on purpose but yeah so yeah it looks uh, almost exactly the same in the CMYK on here which I like um, well you can tell this is not a version of Photoshop I've done anything <laughs> with because I don't know what any of this stuff even means close 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 I am gonna make a uh, Curves adjustment? No. First, I'm going to make a levels adjustment. And we're going to levels adjust it to right about there. And then, then, why I got so country all of a sudden? Then we're going to go to the curves layer. This is a very different stream now. No, uh, we're going to make a curves adjustment layer. 
and pull it over here. I know it's time to update. I'm sorry I haven't updated. It wasn't on purpose. And we can brighten. Do we want I don't want to brighten that much. Do we want to darken anything? Not very much. I kind of had it as dark as I wanted it to begin with. Right about there? Lovely. You can also uh, you can mess around with uh, curves in uh, uh, with the colors too, but I'm not really going to. I like where they were. Yeah, you can get very very different effects in this way. Uh, what else is in here? Blue channel. Yeah, I think I liked where it was. like the pig highlights. Yes, me too. Me too. Uh, thank you, Chase. Uh, I'm late looking really cool. Thank you, Mr. Woods. Uh, you could legitimately cosplay a total hillbilly on stream. No one else is doing that to color comics. No one else is coloring comics, I don't think, either. <laughs> after, after 10 years, I think I figured out why. <laughs> uh, but no, I like how this turned out. Um... So I'll send this down the up the line, down the chain, over the, whatever the, the the phrase is. Uh, oh, let's um, let's look at the time lapse real quick. Are you supposed to like watching your own time lapses? Because I sometimes do. Can I admit that? Like, look how fast it looks like I've made those decisions. Yeah, I remember the the first bunch of art people that I watched on YouTube years ago. It was all almost all time lapses. And the first time I watched this guy on a live stream, I was like, "Oh, he's not the genius that I thought he was." <laughs> uh, it was like it just looks that way at a thousand miles an hour. And you look really smart in time lapses most of the time. Let's see, let's save that in there. And sorry, now I'm trying to find. Did I just put that in there? No. Do I need to refresh for some reason? Sorry, I just need to see where this went. Yeah, it's going to export again. I might as well. I don't know what happened to it. But yeah, I have, uh, I have a paper for the first semester due tomorrow that is mostly done. I uh, put it in the number one cover should be in there anyway there's that but yeah i have a paper to write and i have um uh my final tomorrow but anyway here's the time lapse from today if you missed it doing anything yeah there we go but yeah so uh blue light on the pig Masking the shadows away on the guys. And then using the blue pig light on the guys. <laughs> That's a, that has to be the first time that phrase has ever been uttered. <laughs> yeah, and then at some point it just all starts, it feels the same for the whole rest of the way. Because all I'm doing is doing details. Um, hold on one second. My wife is calling. She's out of town. There we go. All right. All is well. Anyway, is this working? Yeah, it's working. Well, that was exciting. 
<laughs> but no, seriously, any uh, questions, comments, uh, concerns before we wrap this up today? Thank you all for watching. Thanks for hanging out. If you haven't, checked the links to click and buttons to press. <laughs> Good luck on the final tomorrow. Yeah, actually, I need to get this paper done first. And then... And then I'll study. But yeah, but thank you. Uh, we're doing all the same day. We're doing our our essay is due. It's like a five page essay. It has uh, we have uh, our final test. We won't get the grade on that. I don't think before we go to our Christmas luncheon. <laughs> so, or, or maybe we will. But I, like I feel like. Maybe do that a different way next time. <laughs> You're just going to have a lot of people f stressed out throughout the luncheon. Maybe they'll have our grades ready by then. I don't know. Thank you for your lessons. You're an amazing teacher. Thank you, Russo Rocks. I appreciate that very much. I'll have to watch from the start. I love the skin on these characters. Uh, yeah, like I actually talked about that just a little bit. Um, but it really... On this, if you plan for it, like you can really get some nice color blending going on and it makes you seem smarter than you are. Um, so like on on this one, and I'm really just focused on them for now. Um, on this one though, for example, these are just regular like flat base kind of colors, right? Uh, I put a, uh, what do you call it? I put a purple, purple. I put a green light, the same green that is uh, that color green. Okay, the same green that's on the hippo. On a normal layer, and then just lower the opacity to about 50%. So that's at 100, and that's at about 50. And I just put a mask on that and then painted it away. Okay, so on the mask, uh, Painting it on, painting it off, painting it on, painting it off. Right, so you got that. Um, and then what did we do? I did a few little highlights in hard light mode. But uh, most of that skin tone, even this, I was blending a levels adjustment that was a little on the cool side. And then just uh, tinted the ears and noses a little bit red. And, and put that yellow light on there. But that's it. And what comes out is this nice blend of all these neato colors. And it uh, you look smart. <laughs> no, uh, but no, seriously, like, if you, if you kind of plan for it from the beginning, you can play around with some of these sort of blending trickery modes and, and get some, some cool stuff. Just don't use it as a crutch to the point that that's all you know to do and, and kind of know what's going on, why it works, that kind of stuff. That would be my only warning about showing these sort of hacky, <laughs> hacky ways of choosing colors, you know. Awesome job. All the best tomorrow. Maybe a cool idea to interview the comment creators on this channel. I don't know if I could get Slash to, to be on my channel. Yeah, um, that would be cool, but... Get slashed on the stream. Yeah, I'll I'll work on that. <laughs> it's like everyone, welcome. One of the greatest guitar players, legendary all time slash, and there's there's seventeen people here, <laughs> or whatever. That's what would happen. Uh, no, nah, I'm sure we would tell somebody. But that would be funny. But no, slash is is on a creator on this book. If you didn't know. May have failed to mention that. It's worth mentioning. It takes skill to know how and when to do that technique. Yes, of course I'm kidding about like it's when I say hacky, I just mean like I didn't, you know, I didn't go in and go, ooh, I think that grayish red would be great right there. <laughs> like it's like I'm, you know, that 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 sort of thing. I think my mind works very much like a blending mode, and so it just. For me, it's how my head works. But uh, 
But yeah, no, when I'm talking about like mechanical coloring, what I mean is like if if I had, you know, kept this guy all just local colors, whatever he is, like I'm sure it would have looked fine, but like then you wouldn't get that strong shadow, you know, and so when I say like, you know, know what you're doing, I mean like make intentional color choices, that sort of thing. But anyway. I appreciate you guys for watching today. Thanks for hanging out. And uh, we'll do this again. Are we doing this again? What is next week? No. Next week is the member stream. So you have to be a channel member or a, a Patreon person uh, in order to watch that one. But I do feedback on your work, and, and we talk um, about much cooler stuff than we do here. It's totally different. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Like we, we, but we do. We talk about coloring. We talk about uh, whatever questions they might have, whatever they're dealing with, industry stuff. So, for all of you that are wondering, hey, will you look at my stuff? Yes, I will. Uh, during that stream. <laughs> so, uh, it won't be next week. I'll be public, and then it's Christmas Eve. We're gonna stream on Christmas Eve, probably. Maybe I don't know. I don't know where I'm gonna be. I come. I color almost always on a normal layer. I think it would do good to learn this stuff. No, I think that's better, honestly. Like, and I get into moods where I'm like, yeah, just do it like it's on a canvas on a normal layer, and I'll you know do that. Um, and then other times, you know, I kind of want to like let the technology help. Um, like this one. Just want to say your last post uh, TB vid was fabulous. Thank you very much. That was. I got done with it. It was one take. I didn't, you know, then I sat down. I'm like, am I really going to put this out on the internet? I'm like, so, yeah, that's what I felt like at first. But the response was good. Uh, this, the response was really good. And uh, so, yeah, I appreciate that, though. All right, guys, I'm going to bounce. You guys have a good weekend. And uh, we'll do this again soon. Take care.